Hello, everybody. Welcome to Idea Statica webinar uh, from summer series uh, episode How to deal with corvus. Today's presenter is only me, myself, Petra Komarkova. I work as product engineer in Idea Statica. And you can meet me at the conferences, at the webinars, or uh, on our help desk. Uh, today, uh, I will uh, be presenting alone, but I have a colleague who will assist me if uh, you have questions, so he will answer your questions. First, uh, organization staff. Uh, we are using GoToWebinar application. You are um, all mute by default, but if you have any questions, do not hesitate to type them in to the question pane. And as I said, my colleague will answer them or maybe me if we have enough time. Uh, this webinar is from summer series, so uh, we keep it short and sweet. Uh, so let me uh, introduce the agenda. Uh, first, uh, we we um, start to talking or about reinforced concrete corbels and brackets, uh, about uh, conservative design, about the methods uh, which are recommended in the codes. Then we switch to uh, Idea Statica detail application and uh, demonstrate a basic procedure how to. Uh, create a model, uh, how to deal with the reinforcement design, how to run the analysis, uh, how the checks are done. And uh, at the end, we're going to generate reports and drafts for the drawings. And after the end, uh, we're going to conclude, like uh, we can talk about the benefits uh, of this procedure. We can also talk about uh, the the old way so uh rc corbels and brackets so let me start with this um very very known uh, picture uh, there are discontinuity regions which are called or marked as D in this picture, and so-called B regions, the yellow one. And Idea Statica detail application focuses on the D regions. Why? Because they are more complicated. You cannot uh, apply classical beam theory uh, because the bernoulli navier hypothesis does not valid here. And we have a special methods for uh, solving these regions. And today's webinar is about the corbels. So you can see that we have quite simple structure here, but there are plenty of the D regions. So we should really focus on them. What is the conservative uh, way or if you run into a, a corbel in your project, um, what are the methods or what does the code say? So you can uh, uh, reach that there are several distributions uh, for the corbels, or we can also talk about the brackets, depends on the literature, depends on the um, customs from, uh, from the engineers. So you can have like very short uh, corbels, uh, then short corbels and a little bit longer. Depends on the span, uh, depends on the ratio of lever arm and the span. Uh, then we distinguish these short and longer columns. If it's too long, uh, then you should proceed according to uh, different uh, methods or different models, uh, models from frame joints. I'm still talking about the methods, but uh, there is a very, very known method behind this, and it's called Strat and Thai method. 
And here you can see that uh, it always depends on the geometry, uh, on the position of the loads, and based on these facts, you create the strut and time models. If you want to capture a different behavior or different um, uh, failure of, of this D region, you need to use a different model. So there's like plenty rules, plenty um, ways how to assess uh, the load bearing capacity, how to design the reinforcement. And there are uh, some limitations, like you cannot uh, verify the deformation capacity. You really don't know anything about the cracks. Uh, so um, that's why you can run into uh, problems. And what if I tell you that you can forget about these distributions, uh, short, long, corbel, this Stratton time model for that, this for another type. And I would offer you a solution which is unique. You have one model, everything in uh, one application, and you can cover all the checks. So this uh, can be done in Idea Statica Detail via CSFM method. It's an abbreviation for compatible stress field method. Uh, in the first episode of the summer series, um, my colleague Plastic already uh, explained the theory behind. So if you are uh, keen on this theory, you can also uh, watch this webinar if you missed it. And today we're going to focus on the practical part only. So we have a global model in a fair software. It's on the left side. Uh, so you subject this system to the loads, you run the linear uh, calculation, you have some internal forces. And with these internal forces, we're going to work further in Idea Statica detail application and input them into our CSFM model to capture the behavior of the whole system, of the missing parts of the structure. That's why we can solve this corbel as a trimmed part. So you can see that it's trimmed at both ends. So we are going to focus on the corbel only. There is like a second way uh, that you, uh, for example, you don't have any global model. You just want to uh, assess and, and uh, calculate uh, the corbel. So you can use this option that this is not trimmed uh, and you introduce the boundary condition. So this could be like an equivalent model, let's say, to this corbel, and then you focus only on the corbel. Uh, the advantage of this is that uh, you can uh, really focus on, uh, on the corbel and you are introducing the action from the missing part. Uh, the model before, uh, can be useful, for example, if you also want to uh, design the vertical column. So you can model the actual uh, length of the column and deal with the anchorage uh, length of the reinforcing bars of the column. Okay, and then, uh, so after we create the geometry, uh, we're going to stay a bit longer with the reinforcement design. And uh, the reason is that I would like to uh, explain uh, how to correctly input such a reinforcement, uh, these loops, horizontal loops, how to deal with the shape of the reinforcement and how to uh, properly uh, define the special anchorage ends. So imagine you have something like this in reality, and uh, then there are some uh, procedures or ways how to do it in detail application. Okay, so I think now it's time to switch off my camera and uh, jump to Idea Statica detail. So, Uh, 
Okay, I hope you can see the right screen. So we have uh, Idea Statica, uh, the home page, this one. We click on Concrete tab and choose the detail application. We're going to start from the scratch. So <clears throat> uh, you can use this webinar as a tutorial also for, uh, for the case that you need to uh, create a Corbel model. So I just clicked on uh, new. Uh, so I, uh, I'm creating a new project, this wizard. Uh, pops up here. You have some settings. Uh, so concrete. Let's let's have C3037. If you need different um, concrete class, you can choose from this library. Uh, reinforcement B uh, 500B. Concrete covered 25 millimeters. Uh, we can name this as Corbo and. My name is Petra. Uh, so uh, you can choose. You can use templates or you can use general input. Uh, so what to choose if I want to design the core belt? So it is hidden here under the frame joints because it's actually it is actually a frame joint or the topology is like a frame joint. And here you can find uh, the column with bracket or or column with two brackets. So I will choose this one. And in a second uh, or seconds, uh, there will be some geometry, reinforcement and loads. And I will simply edit this template. Before I do any changes, I'm going to save this project. Uh, so I'm clicking on save and I will uh, save it and I can uh, <clears throat> continue with the editing. So this is the topology uh, I would like to uh, modify it. So uh, first of all I will start with the cross sections. So let me also switch to real 3D. So right now it looks like like this. We have a column, we have a corbel with a haunch. I would like to have the the corbel on a different side and uh, have have a bit different geometry. So I will start with this uh, cross section and change the dimensions. So it will be 400 and 300. Yeah, this is the concrete. I can also modify it here and let's keep it simple and have the same cross section for the for the beam. So yeah, now it is, uh, it was changed. I'm going to, yeah, but I'm going to turn off this and I would like to use with the right beam. Okay, now I will switch to model because um, it's better for the visualization right now. Uh, I'm going to redefine the length. It will be only a uh, half meter and it's not going to be a trim. There is an actual end of the corbel. Uh, so uh, I think now it looks okay. And I can add another type of load transfer device and that would be bearing plate. It's going to be placed at the right beam. Um, the dimensions will be 150, thickness 20 millimeters and um, let's modify this dimension. So now it looks just uh, according to my global model and I think the geometry is done and I can uh, go to the loads. So I'm in the navigator, I'm clicking the loads. So here you can see that there are some combinations and load cases. So I will uh, modify them. 
uh, and also there is some kind of problem. So we will uh, explain it in a few uh, minutes. But first, let's um, create the load cases. We're going to deal with three load cases. The first one will be for the self-weight. The second one will be for superimposed load. And the third one uh, will represent the variable load. So now we have the load cases and uh, the combinations are um, defined here. Uh, we will need just uh, one SLS combination. So I'm going to delete this one and we have one for ultimate limit state and the second combination for serviceability limit states. Here under the pen, uh, you can modify the load factors. So uh, I'm going to have 31.35 for the permanent loads and 1.5 for variable. And this is a combination rule for quasi-permanent serviceability limit state combination. Click OK, combinations are done. And now I can click to the first um, load case, go to load impulses and add uh, the impulse. Uh, this will represent the self-weight. Uh, why do I have to use the self-weight here manually? Because it's a trimmed part, so we cannot calculate it automatically. But if you had used uh, the second type of model, which I showed you in the presentation, with the actual boundary condition, uh, the self-weight can be calculated automatically. But it's very easy to, to do it also manually. Uh, I will just uh, choose surface load and define the right intensity. So it's minus 7.5 kilonewtons per meter squared. Um, this is in characteristic values, of course. So this is the first load case. Then we have the second one. Uh, the second one is for superimposed dead load. So uh, we're going to use this bearing plate for that. And uh, this is, um, uh, we will use point load, point force. And this one represents the reaction from the horizontal beam, which is not modeled here, of course, because we are dealing with the corbel only. So imagine that uh, we have this load in a, in a global model. So I'm inputting here just the same value uh, you can also uh, introduce the eccentricity uh, uh, within the uh, bearing plate. Uh, so we have 120 and then we have the third load case and we will <clears throat> define also the point load, but with the different value, it will be just one, minus 100. And according to the code, you should introduce also the vertical, sorry, the horizontal, um, the horizontal force. Uh, and I think it should be like 20% of, of the vertical component. So <clears throat> uh, uh, we can uh, create this horizontal force. So, the load impulses are done, but still uh, there is in the details some kind of error message that uh, the loads are not in equilibrium with the internal forces. So you can notice that there is uh, this mid tab internal forces for each load case. And if something is not correctly input, inputted, um, it's in a red um, highlighted row and you need to adjust these forces uh, to get the whole system in a balance. So, for example, if you know uh, our steel, pro uh, steel application connection, this is like the same procedure that the, the connection needs to be in a, in a balance. So here, this, uh, we are going to edit the forces in this uh, intersection in order to be in compliance with the acting load. 
and uh, then also the internal forces diagrams uh, will correspond the diagrams in the FAIR software. <clears throat> so, let me redefine this. So, here we have a normal force in the column and here is zero. And you can see that in a minute it will be in the balance and everything will be okay without uh, modifying these uh, values or numbers you could not uh, continue farther so it's important to know their reason so right now it's in balance everything is okay and these diagrams are just um, according to the diagrams which are in a, a FAIR software. So here is or now is the time for the for the check that it really looks uh, the same. So I'm talking about these diagrams. Let me show you. So you go to this uh, region and uh, you just simply check that everything is okay. And you have to do it for uh, all the load cases. So I'm switching to LC2. And here we have a different values because we have different loads. Okay, and the last modification this might be a bit time consuming um, that's why you can choose um, between the models there are like using this trim because every time you use this trimmed part uh, you need to deal with these internal forces uh, because we simply need to um, calculate with uh, something because this is not um, enclosed system it does not have any boundary condition so that's why i choose or i uh, also tell you about the second possibility how to create uh, the model so once you uh, have the loads uh, it's good to uncheck these uh, checkboxes because then the calculations are faster and you actually calculate just the combinations uh, it's a non-linear calculation, that's why we um, calculate the combination and not, not the load cases, like it is in the case of linear analysis only. Uh, before you deal with the reinforcement, you can also use this design tools, topology optimization and um, uh, the linear analysis to localize tangents and compressions. Um, I would like to refer you to the uh, first episode of this summer series because my colleague uh, already uh, described and explained everything in a, in a really nice uh, form. So if you are interested in this design tools, please uh, uh, just uh, watch the previous webinar. And here we are going to focus on the reinforcement. So uh, we have some reinforcement in the column. Uh, since we do not um, uh, we do not um, solve the column, we can also um, does not have to we we, we don't have to. Um, 
reinforce the column properly. We just need the parts which are influencing the corbels, which is definitely these two vertical parts. Imagine, uh, notice that uh, this GB1, GB2, uh, it is a normal uh, reinforcing bar. We can redefine the diameters and notice that we use this special anchorage, continuous bar, because this structure uh, does not end here. So that's why we have this type of special anchorage. Um, let's uh, focus on the principal reinforcement of the corpel. And this would be uh, the horizontal loops. So, how to define the reinforcement? Uh, which shape is like this? It's this loop and it's bent and anchored in the column. How to properly define it in detail? So, I'm going to add new entity. It's going to be group of bars. Um, the profile will be 16 millimeters. And let's uh, change the location first. So, <clears throat> I'm going to uh, define the shape on more edges. And the edges would be eight and three. So eight and three. Okay. Uh, now uh, I will change this anchorage type for a perfect bond. And uh, on the other side, I'm going to use a basic anchorage. And uh, since uh, I do not need such a long uh, bar, I'm going to check this last edge and set the dimensions, 500 millimeters. So this is the shape of this reinforcement. And uh, now let's modify the numbers. I would like to have four numbers in layer. And why four? Now, I will again uh, turn on the real 3D picture. And this represents uh, these two loops. So if I uh, display the presentation, uh, so we have this shape of, uh, of the reinforcement, and this is represented by this. This special anchor uh, rich perfect bond represents the loop. So I can assume that uh, it is perfectly anchored at this at this uh, part. So let me switch to model. And I will do one more modification. This uh, mandrel diameter uh, goes according to these uh, settings. If I click on this pen, I can modify it. I would like to have a, a higher radius here because it is recommended in the code. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, the cover is according to the settings, 25 millimeters. And I would like to have like a different or second level layer. So I will copy this reinforcement and um, I will keep everything the same. And I just need to shift it a bit down. So I'm not going to use a uh, cover from settings, but I'm going to define my own, own cover and I can have different covers at uh, the 
particular uh, edges. So since I'm using three edges for the shape definition, eighth and three, I can have two different covers. So at edge number eight, I would like to have it uh, 100 uh, from, like the cover is 100 from this edge, but at this side, it will be the same. So that's why I, I uh, entered 25 millimeters. Okay, and then I'm going to add uh, I'm going to add new entity. Uh, again, it will be group of bars, and this will be for the stirrups and how to define the stirrups. And these stirrups will be the vertical ones. So let's let's change the shape so it will be at right beam uh, sorry it will be on outline right beam and bottom uh, the anchorage will be perfect bond at both ends because it's a stirrup so it goes like around it's a horizontal stirrup and it goes around the corbel so it's perfectly anchored uh, the diameter will be eight millimeters and i will have only two uh, number of layers if i switch to real 3d this represents the stirrups imagine that here we would have uh it, it, like if it would be connected together. So this is stirrup and uh, I need four of them and 100 uh, distant from each other. I'm switching to 2D model and yes, and we can also adjust it uh, yeah we don't want to have user value but from settings and now it looks okay no collision and we also input vertical stirrups and these can be um, added by a cage stirrup if you use cross section um, you can use stirrups. If you use a wall a part of the detail, you need to work with the group of bars. And since I needed to have the stirrup like from this edge to this edge, it's not the cross section, or maybe I, I could use the stirrup, but now, no, I, I think this is the right, right thing. And um, yeah, let's try to change uh, the master for the stirrup so it's going to be placed in the right beam from beginning and there will be just three of them and i think eight millimeters okay now it looks fine and this is uh, pretty much all for the reinforcement design. This is how we can um, correctly input the reinforcement and uh, especially correctly consider the special anchorage uh, types. And you do not uh, have to deal with um, with some calculation of anchorage lengths, etc., because it is automatically checked. So if there is uh, not sufficient anchorage length, uh, then the model stop uh, calculating and uh, you get this information that uh, the calculation stopped at this point because of, and now you can see uh, the governing type of the check. You can see that the calculations are pretty fast and uh, 
not only the analysis but also the checks are done within seconds in this in this uh, case and what we, what do we have here so first we have summary so you can see oh, what was the governing check what where is the problem here you can see everything here you can see just the part of the model depends on what you are standing in this table uh, the results are separately for concrete and reinforcement and for ultimate uh, states and service abandoned states and the details you can also immediately see what check is okay the utilization where you have reserves etc um, so if we check the strength we can also see that there is uh, like this typical topology which you can find in strat and tie models that we have these strats uh, we can also look if the concrete is um, cracked and uh, uh, we can uh, observe the compression softening effect so here we can see that the concrete is in higher stresses so uh, the kc factor it was applied here uh, here is the anchorage uh, check so everything is okay. You can see this in this table and uh, the higher stress is on this uh, vertical bar. Also, we can see that here we have quite uh, a high utilization. You can switch to uh, anchorage force or bond stress. So, uh, Based on these uh, checks, we can say that everything is uh, anchored properly and this can be really uh, fabricated according to this design. So this was, I'm going back to strength check and in the reinforcement, we can see again stresses, strains and uh, most utilized entities. Uh, the checks are done uh, uh like this that we take the limit value from the code limit stress limit strain and compare it to the actual uh stress and strain so it's still code compliant but uh there are no formulas and no internal forces like in the classical beam theory and um what is the best you can look at the cracks where can uh, where they can occur what is their thickness and distances and um, based on this check you can also uh, optimize the reinforcement or uh, you can really check the, the behavior of the structure. Uh, in case of using strat and tie model you cannot actually verify the crack with uh, state or somehow there are some models but again you need to use like a different model here uh, you have one model one solution and it's pretty clear uh, if we use the whole part we can also check the deformation but this is a trimmed part so there is missing the last tab for deformations let me switch to bill of material so once you are done with your design you can click on this look at the shapes and generate uh, the uh, this uh, dxf file as a draft for your drawing so in the in the autocad or a different kind of cad tool you can really uh, modify the the shapes for example you would like do these loops and um, check your detail ring rules according to that and this could serve as a as a draft for your drawing and uh, at the end of this navigator we have a report preview or print <clears throat> uh, so you can generate the report with all uh, the the data in in which we 
inputs, so it's geometry, loads, all the uh, load cases, uh, also some um, scheme of uh, reinforcement uh, layout, so it can be also as a uh, it can serve as a draft for a detailers, uh, all the results and checks all in one place. And you can uh, print it to doc file or uh, PDF, of course. Okay, so this is pretty much everything from the practical part. And what is the conclusion? So uh, you can use the old way, like uh, create a strut and tie models, uh, do the, uh, deal with the node areas, uh, calculate a bunch of equations, uh, maybe establish or create another model to, to check a different uh, type of failure. And uh, uh, the, the results are uh, required areas for the reinforcement, and you need to draw it. And it's all uh, quite time-consuming. I'm not saying it's a it's a bad uh, approach, but it's definitely time-consuming. And uh, if there is some kind of change, you have to do everything once again, hold the process, all the calculations. Uh, or you, you need to modify the whole geometry uh, because there are there is there are like a lot of unknowns. So uh, this is like the the biggest pain of this method, and you cannot verify the deformation capacity. You cannot verify the crack width. So. Uh, that's why I would use compatible stress field method, CSFM, because it's fast. You have unique solution, one model. No more uh, several models, model for this failure, uh, the other one, etc. Uh, you have all checks in one application, both ultimate and limit and serviceability limit states. And you have the reports and drafts for the drawing. So I think this is the, the biggest benefit of this application, Idastatica Detail, that you can deal with uh, corbels and print, uh, basic uh, discontinuity regions like corbel is, but also they can be very complex. The geometry can be really tricky. Uh, if it's too tricky or complex, then you don't have any recommended models for that in strut and tie. And we have also solution for pre-stressed discontinuity regions. Uh, so this is really a huge topic because especially for corbels, when we, you need to uh, strengthen the existing corbels, the reinforcement is on its full capacity, so you need to add like uh, pre-stressing bars or strengths, and then you need to, of course, uh, assess it. And for that, you can use Ideastatica detail. But about this topic, uh, let's let's or let's leave this topic for another webinar. I promised you that it will be short, uh, so I'm not going to. Uh, keep you uh, any longer here, so uh, the questions will be answered via email, or maybe some of them were already uh, taken care of by my colleague. Uh, what comes next? Um, you can look forward to seeing a third episode of summer series uh, on topic how to code check uh, deep beams. So uh, we're going to discuss. Uh, what is the border between deep beam and long beam? There will be also a few of the theory, and again, it will be focused on idea statica detail. And if you uh, missed the first episode, uh, don't worry, it is recorded and it is available on our website. 
after the webinar, please short. Uh, there is a short survey, so uh, we would appreciate your feedback if you like it or not. Uh, uh, what is there's always room for improvement. Uh, this recording will be also uh, placed in our support center and YouTube channel. And if you don't know Idea Statica, get the trial and test it on your own. It was a pleasure for me to be with you and uh, I wish you a pleasant day and calculate yesterday's estimates. Bye-bye.